this morning, police are searching for the person who shot and killed a man overnight in Minneapolis. Right now, the city of Delano is hoping that all of its preps are enough to keep the rising Crow River at bay. We are live with that and what Governor Mark Dayton is doing today as flooding concerns mount. City of St. Paul is under a state of emergency this morning. Just how much higher the Mississippi River will go. We have team coverage for you coming up in just a few moments. We'll also explain why you just saw a video of a giant <laughs> clam. There's a great explanation for it. It's not real. Jonathan Uhas is here, though, with a real possibility of some rain. It's a today. bummer it's not real because it would have been a great. It would have been great. Great. One heck of a pearl, thing. huh? Yes, absolutely. Just saying, thinking, it's a Megan. woman. I didn't think I'm about like, that. Hey. <laughs> All right, let me give you the details here. Uh, we have nice weather right now. If you're heading out for a walk or run, a little sticky outside. The dew point's at 61, air temperature at 66. Weather is going to change on us this afternoon a bit. We'll see an increase in the clouds here before the noon hour, and then we'll have spotty thunderstorms around. And if you get one, the last 20 to 30 minutes, and there's the potential that some could produce some small hail, maybe 20 minutes, 30 minutes of rain, and possibly even some funnel clouds like we had yesterday, but they're not dangerous tornadoes. They're not going to get dangerous and turn on to, uh, turn into ground tornadoes that would damage things. So I'll explain more coming up at 645. We expect a high today at 80 degrees. Okay, Jonathan, sounds good. In the meantime, let's check in with Josie Smith, see how our morning drive is looking at 630. Hello. Well, hi, Megan. We're at that time in the morning where things are definitely getting a lot busier out there. So we actually do have a number of slowdowns. I'll show you the map and see what I mean but first I want to talk about highway 61 northbound 494 to 94 you can see all that green so things are moving well right now yesterday it was pretty packed because of the closure of Warner Road so we'll keep an eye on it for you 35w southbound in Blaine 95th Avenue to 694 you can see that there's a lot of red and yellow there let's take a look at the South Metro on highway 169 northbound at 101 just about 15 minutes ago it was fine but now check it out at Old Shakopee Road very slow there because of all the closures in Scott County. Also, 35W northbound in Burnsville is getting thick right around Highway 13. So you can see it's pretty plugged up right, especially in this area. So we're at that time of the morning where it's definitely getting a lot busier out there, Megan. Okay, Josie, we'll uh, check in with you in the next couple of minutes, see if things have improved at all or what the situation looks like. Well, this morning we are keeping a very close eye on local rivers flowing over their banks, and that does include the Crow River in Delano, which according to the U.S. Geological Survey did reach its height this morning and maybe going down slowly for the next couple of days. It's uh, also the first stop for Governor Mark Dayton. He is uh, making a stop there today as he tours areas trying to keep floodwaters at bay and recover from our drenching rains. Let's get to Katherine Johnson. She joins us live now with Delano, our team coverage there, Katherine. The latest observation of the Crow River here in Delano was recorded just about an hour ago at 530 at 20.8 feet. And let me tell you why that's good news. I want to zoom in on this bridge back here just an hour ago at 530 when that recording was taken. The river was right up to the bridge. You couldn't see under it. And now you can just barely see the sunshine going right under the bridge right there. So that's the good news. The National Weather Service now reporting that the river crested at 21.2 feet overnight. So now we're expecting these water levels to start to go down. We want to show you what this area looks like from Chopper 5. We know Governor Dayton is going to be here in Delano at 930 to meet with emergency managers at City Hall to figure out what to do next. Because as you can see there, the water throughout this area is still a big problem. We know businesses in Delano are filled with water pumps. They're fighting to keep the river from swelling into their businesses. Roads are closed. Backyards are swamped. Some basements are also flooded. But so far, no evacuations and no injuries have been reported here. Still, that's why the governor is trying to take action now before things do get any worse. And, you know, we're going to be all out everywhere where there's a need uh, as rapidly as possible and doing whatever we can to help people deal with this situation problems we're seeing all throughout the state. We know at noon the governor will then go to the groundbreaking of a flood mitigation project in Chaska. They're going to start raising the roadways there, Highway 61 and Highway 101, so these flooding problems over the roads aren't bigger problems in the future. Live in Delano, Katherine Johnson, 5 Eyewitness News. 6.33 is the time. Thanks, Katherine. This afternoon, Governor Dayton will also be meeting with folks in Belle Plaine. Just about 15 minutes southwest of this city, about half of Blakely Township's 500 residents are out of their homes. Officials gave folks an update on the progress yesterday. Phones and power are still out. And because of roadblocks, no one can get in or out of town. 
Now, later on today, an escort car will take families in one at a time to retrieve some of their belongings from their homes. Then it'll take them back out. Also, a seismic monitor will be installed to see if the saturated ground is letting the roads shift too much. Right now, the Mississippi River is rising rapidly in St. Paul, and that has forced the city to declare a state of emergency. Our Steve Patterson continues our team coverage this morning, joining us live now from the capital city with a look at things, Steve. Good morning. Yeah, we're here and there are some pretty interesting visuals behind us. And then I suppose the most mind boggling aspect of all of this is that the water will still continue to rise. We keep showing you uh, because we think that this is a common landmark that a lot of people will get a, a real sense or a feel for what this water is like here. That's the Harriet Island Pavilion there, and it's just totally surrounded by water. It's just kind of wild to see it, but the Mississippi River has just spilled over the riverbanks, and it has stretched all the way to where we are, hundreds of yards over to where we are. Let's get some more perspective here. I want to take you up to the chopper, some really interesting video that we got that will show you sort of the scope of all of the flooding that we're dealing with. And bear in mind that right now the Mississippi River is at 18 and a half feet. It's going to continue to rise. It's not expected to crest until later in the week on Thursday, and that'll be at about 20, uh, a little over 20, about 20.5 feet. And then it's going to take days for that to come back down. So these visuals that you're seeing of all sorts of uh, of all sorts of flooding and just how out, how far far and wide it can really go it's going to be it's going to be here for a while it's not going to go anywhere so guys again here we were i was actually just talking with my photographer jeff and he was saying he remembers watching a show here it was a great show but then whenever you look out here the place where people would be totally covered in water it's really just if you get a moment and you can come down here and sort of see it it's a sight to be seen but again patience is what the folks and city officials in st paul will be preaching because once it crests it's going to hang there for a little while guys all right steve now uh, we got to ask you about that giant clam we have to go back to him because we showed it in the headlines is that possible the giant clam did you see the giant clam I saw the giant clam all right steve can we quickly see the clam across give, the give us the quick this is not a giant it's not an actual clam but it is a what Yes, it is actually a piece of playground equipment. There's a playground a few hundred yards down to my left at the sort of the entrance to Harriet Island. It came from there. In fact, the guy who put that into the ground said, wait, no, don't worry. There is not an attack of a giant clam coming to the Twin Cities. Boy, would that be the last thing that we need at this point. It is fake. But he was surprised to know he didn't know that his own piece of equipment actually floats. So we were glad to deliver that bit of happy news to him this Tuesday. All right. Thank you, Steve. And for those of us, uh, those of you who are just joining us, it did cause quite the uh, kerfuffle during the five o'clock newscast this morning because we saw that clam floating down the river in front of Steve. So it was. Well, I like Megan's comment. What kind of pearl would it produce? <laughs> exactly. All right. Well, uh, joining us now is the pilot of Chopper 5, Ken Melkier. We've had him up flying over some of the areas hardest hit by flooding over the course of the last couple of days. You've logged a lot of flight hours. Um, kind of walk us through a little bit about what you've been seeing. You've been doing this for a long time. How does it rate as far as some of the other years of big widespread picture? Wow. Well, you know, the first one of the first big stories that I covered in Chopper 5 was actually the flood in Grand Forks back in 1990 when Chopper 5 just went into service. Mm -hmm. And uh, the difference there, as opposed to now, is spring flooding, you have a chance to prepare for it. You can see it coming days, weeks, months ahead of time. Mm -hmm. So you have, you, you have that time for preparation. Flash flooding is a whole different story when it hits in the middle of summer. I mean, that is really Mother Nature's haymaker. You know, there's no time for preparation. Much of the rain falls at nightfall. You wake up, you got water in the basement. Yep. You know, you got mud in the front yard. That's, that's what happens. But uh, our first call, when the rain hit, we went down to Mankato, and uh, th there was definitely some damage there from mudslides and from, uh, uh, you know, water accumulating in and around town. But the rivers really hadn't uh, swollen at that sure. point yet. Okay, day two. We, uh, we head down to Laverne and uh, Rock Rapids, Iowa, okay, starting to get bad, mm -hmm. right? In small communities like that, they get hit, real, hit really hard. You know, it takes less water, yep. same level of damage in town. Day three, oh my goodness, now the rivers are starting to swell up. You know, we're down in Northfield with the Cannon River. We're in uh, Fairbolt and Owatonna with the Strait River, St. Clair with the Lesur River back to Mankato and St. Peter and um, Blakely, Blakely with the Minnesota was, yeah. River. And, and now we've got the Mississippi River 
and the Minnesota River where there's a confluence right in town here and we're starting to worry about that this week. Sure. Wednesday and Thursday. So this is really some unprecedented flooding. Uh, you know, I'm used to seeing spring flooding, but the only scenario that I have seen that comes close to this goes back a couple of years to Duluth when yes. All the Jay Cook State Park and all the roads were washed out. And, and almost yeah. the same time, you know, we had a couple of moisture-laden cold fronts that came through, dropped a volley of uh, thunderstorms right over the Duluth, Duluth area. You had seven and a half inches that fell within 24 hours. And, you know, it was already rain-soaked to begin with, so you got mudslides going into the St. Louis River. It turned the whole river, which is really quite picturesque, turned it rust red mm -hmm. and it all spewed out into Lake Superior. That's the closest that I have seen and what we've got going right now. Well, Ken, we appreciate your perspective today and I'm sure you're going to be up at some point today getting some more video for everyone at home. So I gave him again a, a bigger picture of all the flooding that's going on. Megan. Yeah. All right, guys. Hey, we will keep a very close eye on the rising waters for you. We'll bring you the latest as it happens here on air and also online, kstp.com.